Busel speaker. Pavel is one of the leading experts on speed reading in Russia. He has been researching the topic, has reading since 2006, conducted trainings at Moscow State University at the government of the Russian Federation and major Russian companies. In 2009, he founded his training center, which is uh, called Noraman, and the, he also wrote a book, Speed Reading Practical Aspects, that has become a best-selling book in the worldwide. Uh, hello to everyone. And I'm truly glad to welcome you all. So we'll be looking at the ne neural efficiency and also developing the hidden possibility of the brain. Let's start with this question. How, is, how often would you use your brain and, and to what extent? I mean, many people tend to use uh, more of their parts of their bodies, but nowadays so we need to switch to our brain activities. So not so many people can find it as an easy exercise to engage your brain all the time. So my name is Pavel Polagin, and my mission is um, to get people involved very quickly in the training exercise to achieve better results and to make very quick progress. Because the more you learn, the quicker you learn, then the more then you succeed and in the fastest way. So I'm from Volgograd region. In fact, that's uh, my photos from the school. I didn't have any practice of speed reading. And then I joined the engineering university. And so I started to to exercise the speed reading. And then I realized that it does help to process information, to retain information better. And because we are covered and by the flows of data, then it took me two, three years to master the skills. So in, it was in 2009 that I started to do it professional. So 54 companies have participated in my training sessions. So there's, there's a governmental institutions and the Metro, El Dorado. So there's a major companies in the market. Next time acting as a speaker and I attend many conferences and help people to activate their brain function. So I travel across the globe and also wrote a book, this best-selling book, which is called Speed Reading Practical Aspects. So it just topped the sales for five years because the speed reading techniques are all too relevant to, to all the people. I also make presentations on various channels and then if you have any questions during my presentation or after my presentation, so you can join me on Facebook, so you can find more information, more details. So if you join as a friend, then then you will, can send your questions to me. So neural neural men. So these are the people. So the people we activate your brain, and we make. Uh, better those people that can make the world better. So that's the system of intellectual leadership. So that's about the neural agility. And I believe this will change the rest of the day. And probably this will bring changes to your entire life, like weeks and months following these events. So let's look at in the flows of information. And why do we need to develop hidden possibilities of the brain? So just um, with this question goes to you. I mean, if there are many of you who would work with a lot of lots of information, reading e-books, listening to materials, to watching videos, it's like uh, this whole flow of information is becoming burdensome for us. So if you look at the data volume that is being processed by our brain, so they see this sharp increase in five times increase, so it's 250 up to 1,250. If we look at the statistics uh, the back in 29, so, so within one minute per internet would bring us this picture from Google. That was um, um, 3.8 million of search searches and then more than 8 hundred thousand tweets and so on and so forth. So this is a continuous flow of information and the brain just cannot cope with all of it. So then the brain starts to save its energy. So instead of analyzing, instead of uh, 
for seeing things. So the, our brain switches to the superficial level. As this superficial, like surface level, is called clip thinking function. So just you do it in a sort of video clips with a very fragmented pieces of information. So and if we look at the physically at what is happening to other people, it's Rada Granovska I would like to cite that those people that get the, into the habit of clip thinking will not be able to undertake a very in-depth logical analysis. So they will tend to address only primitive tasks because they will not train themselves and therefore they will not achieve great results in this in-depth analytical thinking. And this is our task. So we need to develop this kind of thinking and we need to help our children to, to create and to make better things in the world. So if we're talking about this creation of better things, then there are two modes relating to the brain. So like the brain and the two operational modes. So mode number one, survival. So that's survival and creation. That's the upper level. So if you want your brain to switch from the survival mode into the creation mode, then you need some energy. So this is the skill, you know, this is in very simplistic terms, because this is not, not my intention to give you every detail of the brain functions, just in this very clear way, we see that we can go from the baseline level to the upper one. So, so the brain, when the brain receives lots of information that it cannot cope with, we have already wasted some of our energy. So we're running short of energy and then the brain it just start in the saving mode let's, let's take a look back say 300 years ago what were the challenges and problems that people faced back then that that was famine or hunger so if crops uh, just perished then people could die those diseases also were very relevant many years ago because they died and then they couldn't get enough of crops and wars. Say, if we imagine ourselves living in a house and then the war would be unleashed, then the army would just march through the house and we would be destroyed. And back then, 300 years ago, people were just in the survival mode just all this time. And then most of the people on the planet lived like that. And that the anxiety came, this anxious state of the brain as something that got endangered or ingrained in the brain of our generation. So this is something that we need to develop because throughout history the humankind to try to survive and also use the saving mode whenever it was needed so in the past these threats were real but many of these real time threats uh, have been overcome the famine hungry the sapiens the a brief history of humankind this is the book that i strongly recommend to you and it just describes those challenges. So it's not the famine that all we have now a different kind of problem. People die because the diet is wrong. And then this pandemic thing, and it's all about vaccination, because once we get the vaccine, then we'll save other people from getting infected. There are not so many wars as there were in the past. So we see that our brain switches to the inner side of things. So it goes from external threats to internal anxiety. Just imagine that this long time ago, you would be walking across the woods and then the brain would switch to the saving mode. Just like if you see, if you see something terrible in the night or if you hear there's some strange nose, noise, then you, your quick response would be running away from a wolf or from a bear. I mean, one person would run, would run away, another person would stay and freeze, and the third person would try and take a fight with the animal. It just all these uh, characteristics that uh, we see that develop in time, 
and we can do it parallel with the fridge. For example, you go and you see some food. I mean, some people can resist this food that they can eat. Other people will not resist, and so there are people that will eat up everything. Right. So when we start. Uh, Trading with people, and then uh, some people will be very reluctant, saying that we don't have time, we don't have resources, and we don't have time to read. But once we are on the creative, on the good side, so it's all about filling your brain with resources and with the energy. So there are several techniques that I can share with you, and there is one particular technique which I'm going to do in practice. It just those centers of creation that you can use as a resource-based brain. Just uh, we look at the distraction, whether we can focus our attention without any distraction, and we use our long-term memory in order to build up new neural connection. Otherwise, so we're lacking resources, and we just do not re retain information. So, but we do have resources. We do remember the data, and we can communicate effectively, and then we can make better decisions. And this is something that will help leaders and throughout major companies so they can use their brain resources in order to create more better things for themselves and their companies alike. Next slide. There are several skills for neural efficiency that I would like to share with you. There is by the way, I'm in the process of writing a book on this topic and uh, I'd start with um, attention control. Just ask yourself, I mean, is it relevant to you? Would you like to better control your attention? Would you like to become more focused in a more effective way without being distracted by other things? Like you get, you know, on the point and then you can keep your attention. So if it's all about attention, I can give you a number of cases. So. And this client came and asking that, you know, I have to deal with lots of information because I do training, I do studies, I do work, and then I want to make it more effective and I want to retain more information. I'm talking about the Viktor Bakhmetsev, who is the consular of the, to the president of the Moscow Federation Go. So, and it helped a lot because his speed increased by three times and now his brains was works or functions as a super computer so we can call it the supercomputer function. So I want you to engage in this interactive exercise. Just write one between one and five you can measure you can measure your interest. So right now what's your interest and what's going on? I mean if you, if it's five that means that you are entirely interested and you're listening to me very carefully just this is you are fully connected to me so and if your mark is one that means that you are disconnected because you didn't have you had a bad night or you are tired and then two three and four this is something between uh, disconnected and fully connected so, so how do you measure your engagement and the quality of your brain. So this is a very important like, startup exercise because you need to know where you are and how do you feel. And this is, is this great exercise that is called neural exercising. So you'll be using your palms and your fingers and this will help you to activate this new core of your brain, you know, the upper level that will grow, that will make you more happy, that will help you create more things. So it's 1951. Um, Dr. Penfold to describe the brain and all its aspects. So if we look at this, uh, at, our, at the brain and that part that is responsible for our physical motion, then our palms and then the fingers, so that's will account for one-fourth, so that's one-fourth of all this motion apparatus that belongs to our fingers. So if once we activate our fingers or our palms, this will help us activate our brain, and then we can use this energy in order to fulfill the other tasks. So I will just show it to you, and then you'll see how you're becoming to switch on, you're becoming 
in, engaged. So that is the new role exercises that will help you become oh, more more advanced in the ne neural plasticity sphere. So I can even get some music so that we will cheer up and then I'll be on your full screen and you will follow me. So these are some of the exercises and I would like to invite you to try and imitate those exercises. Just follow me, just don't give up and try to repeat the exercises that I will be showing to you. So I'll make it a vivid exercise and as I said, it will be the music. Let's get started. So, so let's start with this. I will just get some warmth around between our palms. So that's the first, the preparatory stage, and uh, it's an, quite an easy stage. Everyone can succeed. So then we we'll started just doing the same thing with our fingers from on both sides. So that's great. Doing good. So this is not. This is an easy task as well. So then, next thing, just we put fingers together and make this kind of lock. But you need to feel. You need to feel each and every finger, and then you just change it to the second kind of lock, which is the um, second, the second, first, and the second, and then you you should increase your speed. Just do it like one and two, one and two. Great. So if you can follow me, and then if you can follow me, if you are comfortable with the speed, that's great. So, but if you can do it even more faster, then please do and try. So it's like one and two, but then you start pretty well. But then it will become harder and harder. I mean, because your fingers are moving, so they're not warmed enough. So we need to move on to this another speed. So let's make it f faster, and then we see that literally, it's just physically, the energy is being brought to your head, to your shoulders, and that's the fastest mode. I mean, just do the best of you, just like only for three sec seconds. Please try, and then the, the two seconds and one second, and do the fastest mode. Right, now shake your fingers and shake your hands and relax. So this is a very easy exercise, but it will make your brain more plastic. And then next exercise, just changing your hands just to right side or left side. So, so but you need to follow the pattern, the, and the, it's impossible. It is important. So if you can cope with the speed, you can increase, you can speed up. So on the one hand, so these exercises are rather simple and easy to do, but to do, but on the other hand, so if you have never done them before, they will help you to activate your brain and to make it even more effective. So you can do it, uh, you can do it as you like, but if you can follow me with my speed, that, then that's great. That these are simple things, but that activate our brain perfectly. So, and finally, so this last exercise, you find this, uh, you know, that this, uh, it's like the thumb, so these are great results, but if everything is bad, you'll get no, no results. Then you need to clap your hands, and then you change your fingers, and again. So clap and change fingers, clapping, changing, clapping, changing, and then you speed up. You do it faster, faster, and then again, as fast as you can. And probably you can get this as a result, and even if you get none on both hands, this can be the okay, case, so you can get great on both hands, this can happen too, but try your best to, to achieve, and then let, give a round of applause to your souls, because you did it, and then we'll get back to the presentation. So the idea of this exercise, uh -huh, it just the, it helps you to get more engaged, and if you try to measure the level of your engagement right now after this exercise, I'm sure that your level will be higher, and I'm also sure, I'm very confident that you get this wave of energy, and your brain has become more active, so you'll be more productive, you'll be more focused, you'll be able to make better decisions. Uh, but what's more important, I bring happiness to it, because I'm trying to make these people happy, because you see that your brain gets activated and you feel happier. So once you start the training, once you see the results, so you start a very 
quick process of transformation and change, and this will even change the perception of other, other people, and the, you will see a visible impact. That. So uh, now go back to the exercises. You can do it in the morning, and you can do it in the evening. So if you feel that you are really tired after the day of work, then you can just activate your brain. But on the other hand, so hand, you can start it as a challenge for yourselves. Like if you feel that you like so the state of mind or body that you are in, then you can start doing it every day, every after like two to three minutes, and then if you can succeed in doing it every day within one month, please give me your feedback. So feedback. If you can write it to me, that's explaining what are the results or what what did you achieve? And if you want to learn more about neural exercises, so I'll be happy to share it with you because we have a larger TV program so that um, many people in Russia could use it and do these exercises to activate your brain. Now that's the results, the outcome of brain activation. Because I always hear complaints from people saying that I don't remember things very well very well. I cannot recollect or say I'm getting older. So, But you can do these exercises. For example, Natalia, she's one of the person who came to us searching for help. So she was very bad at remembering figures, but so we started training and it was um, 80, 80 numbers that she could recollect. So and it took her two two and a half minutes because usually it would take one minute and a half for the well-trained people but nevertheless it took her two minutes and a half to remember all those numbers from the P and the number and then you can even remember like in two digits three digits and that was a great thing so she saw it for herself so and then I ask her, man, can you really believe it that that was your result? And yes, she 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 did, she could, but that was very impressive. So thank you so very much. And I would like to give a couple of recommendations. Please read books on a regular basis because reading books will help you to develop your brain. So we are talking but readers who are leaders so those people who read they will lead warren buffett when he started his visit it was uh, between 500 and 1000 pages per, per day and up till now has been keeping up with 500 pages per day because it's like a fitness for his mind so he's one of the richest person in the world and he's doing great things for the planet and that we could do the same thing so we can become the real leaders that people will be looking up to so, so my second recommendation is watching m movers or films so peaceful warrior is one of them because of this uh, film shows that you can be really productive if your attention is well focused so even you will see it for yourself the once you do the neural exercises so your productivity will be on the rise because the attention will be engaged so the next film would be limitless so that's a brilliant film and that's all about getting your brain activated and also going out of your borders and they used pills in this film, but I can use more exercises to achieve the same result. So thank you so much. I'm really very happy to have this opportunity to speak before and welcome to newer men and welcome to, to those people who would like to improve themselves and make the world better. So if you have any questions or insights, please do share them with us. If you would like to learn more about brain functioning or speed reading, so I can make a gift for you. I will send you one of the chapters from my book. So you can also get in touch with me on Instagram. So I'm running out of sh I'm running out of time so we don't have time for questions and answers therefore on this note i would like to thank you thank you for participating for taking on this challenge and for listening to me thank you pavel thank you so much for this very great and insightful session and 
very dynamic masterclass. I believe there will be more people willing to learn more about techniques and getting in contact with you.